Okay. that today and So is it Sam and Mike? Obviously, there aren't. Everyone else is leaving. Even my brand new appointee. Even the brand new appointee. Oh. committee meeting for September 5th and if we could do a roll call please Commissioner Howard present Commissioner Postick present Commissioner Dean Commissioner Housel here Commissioner Joyce here Commissioner Kasparit Commissioner Lawson here Commissioner Templeton here Commissioner Voorhees here. you have a quorum Thank you. Okay, item two, approval of minutes. Move approval. Second. Okay. Yes, um, I think uh, committee member Voorhees uh, made the motion, and who seconded? Uh, Postic. Second. Item three, cases withdrawn, none. Uh, item, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, just went blank. Okay. Yeah, any any discussion on the minutes? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Minutes are approved. Item three, cases withdrawn? None. Item four, continuance request? None. Item five, consent docket? None. Item six, cases for individual consideration? None. Item seven, other business? 7A, SPUD 01137 at 3034 Southwest 13th Street. Um, I, once again, I started with an overall map showing the entire district. Um, we, we've been we, the, your case last month was over in this neighborhood, so just to show that we're actually kind of getting to the western um, portion of your district, which is a very broad east to west. Um, this request is a little compli more complicated than others in that it's in a current SPUD, which was approved 20 years ago. Um, since it was a pre-existing SPUD in, in 2007 when the Riverfront District was established, it was exempt from being included in the Riverfront District. But now that they're, they're coming in to essentially rezone, it now opens that back up and 
as we will continue to to recommend it should be put into Scenic River. Um, the southern extent, as you can see, uh, is a few blocks to the south, but you have I-44 that runs down the western edge of it, and then the district goes a couple of miles to the west. Uh, currently, what's on the site is, um, I say brick and stone, I might be misspeaking, but a uh, material storage that's been there for quite some time. The last time you guys saw this area was there was a rezoning about three years ago that was an adjacent lot to the south. Same property owner. Unfortunately, in that case, when that ordinance got approved at council, it was removed from Scenic River. Um, and so this time we had a lot of meetings with the applicant's representative, Mr. Box, and we do appreciate the fact that they were not objecting to it. This parcel being put into Scenic River. Um, as you can tell from the staff report, there's really um, one issue that um, staff uh, had quite a lengthy discussion of, is, and that is the request to have a billboard or a pole sign in Scenic River. Um, pole signs and specifically billboards are prohibited. Um, in the sign section of the regulations. As discussed in the staff report, um, this is located in a, a residential neighborhood. Um, we make references to the distance to, there's an existing house that's to the north of it, there's an existing house immediately adjacent to the east of it, and then there is a house to the south of it, which is right here. But um, on the plan, and I'll show you that in a minute, they're proposing a billboard about where my, the hand is, and you can see where the elevated um, I-44 is in that area, and I'll, I'll go back to the pictures that I took. Um, <clears throat> so to the left here is the subject site. On the right, that's essentially the ramp that's going up to I-44. You have I-44 here is off to the left. The proposed location of the billboard is roughly where my hand is. Um, and so, in, uh, and right here, I'm just looking directly across the street, and you can see there's a large expanse of grass till you get to the elevated uh, roadway. Um, one of the discussions that we had in here is sometimes the objection can be to light from billboards, because uh, they're also requesting, well, they're requesting an EMD level one, which is allowed in Scenic River. Those are the ones that are static for seven or eight seconds, and then the message changes. So it can't scroll, and it can't, it's not fully digital. Um, but there is light that does c come from that, and we could end up with a light trespass scenario with those um, existing residences. However, they're quite a distance away from this, and given the height of the pole, um, I'm not an expert in that, so I don't know what the overall impact of that could be. Um, staff does recommend approval of the SPUD with the condition that they eliminate the non-accessory sign, uh, the billboard, 8300.66, as a permitted use. Okay, is the applicant... Would you like to? And I, I'm sorry, I stopped short of here. Here's the, the plan that was turned in, and this is the location of uh, the billboard. And he, over here is where I-44 is, right here. Okay. Could you state your name? And sure. Address? David Box, 522 Callcore Drive. I'm here on behalf of the applicant and property owner, Mr. Wayne Knoll, who's also here with me. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here today. Um, this is uh, an SPUD application, and as staff indicated, um, there's, a, there's a bit of history with this, this site. Again, originally it was zoned before the existence of the design overlay. Uh, when it came back through four years ago in 2015, uh, it was a request of this body that it be included. At the time, uh, the applicant was represented by our law firm, and we objected to that. And when it got to city council, those uh, requests were negotiated out so that the SPUD was approved without being included in the, the overlay. And so what we're coming with here today is what we believe to be a compromise. 
Um, as staff indicated, we had several meetings with staff once we got this filed. Um, our, our SPUD initially did not include any language that would put this into the scenic river overlay. Uh, it was my client's desire to, to have his property remain as it is today and not be in it. But after visiting with staff, uh, we agreed to include it. We in agreed to include all the regulations that would apply to development within the scenic river overlay, but for the ability to have a sign. Uh, so we believe this to be a compromise. If you look at the exhibit that I handed out, what you'll see is um, I have three pins. Just I tried to focus just on this kind of small area, and you'll see the proposed location, and you'll see that there's two other billboards uh, whose location is closer or similar in proximity to the river. Uh, oh, I bet I had more. Than uh, our site, where the billboard would be, is approximately 2,000 feet from the river because of berms and overpasses and such, I don't believe this would have an impact on the river. And so I think what the committee is able to get here is a site that when developed would have to meet all of the guidelines and regulations uh, that are required of a, a development within the scenic river. Uh, in exchange, we'd like the ability to have a, a sign in, in a similar manner to other sites up and down I-40 and other highways around the city. Um, one of the, the comments by staff was that poles aren't allowed. Uh, my client would be happy to clad the pole with something uh, that would be more attractive if that's something that the committee would like. Uh, so with that, we'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Oh, one, uh, one additional thing. The, the current spud allows the material, the rock and stone, to be stacked as high as 12 feet. And our spud, um, again, kind of in the, the spirit of coming back to what the scenic river uh, would like, we have negotiated that down against ourselves to the eight feet. Um, so again, I believe that to be another concession that, that would be a positive for uh, this committee. So can you tell me the dimensions? I mean, is it a full-size billboard that's, you know, 30, 40 feet? Yeah, it, it would be, it would be a traditional-sized billboard. And do you know the diameter of the pole? I mean, is it a eight feet, six feet, four feet? I don't. Um, whatever permitting would require is, is what we would or install. Yeah. Um, I was just going to point out that on in the SPUD document, the second page of the SPUD document, down on number six for signs, freestanding accessory signs, uh, what they're indicating, um, nope, hang on a minute. Flip the page, that's accessory. Non-accessory signs, I apologize. Maximum height of 50 feet, 14 by 48 feet foot V-type. So it would be the ones that had two faces, but the angle is such that it's closer together, and so it doesn't count as two separate signs. EMD level one, 672 square foot um, per face. But there isn't a reference, and I'm trying to en envision how big those poles are just from, they're, yeah, I, I don't, I honestly don't know the two, three, I don't know how many. So the and on the EMD issue, uh, the ordinance does address what's called NIT levels, and there are requirements uh, at certain times of the day, dusk, that it be reduced. Uh, because it's all handled electronically now, it can all be done through a computer system in which at certain times of the day, at certain times of year, the brightness is automatically lowered to meet the NIT levels as prescribed in the code so that you don't have glare, you don't have the light trespass. So the, the code is advanced enough at this point to address that, that brightness factor. So you just handed this um, map out with the other two billboard locations. Um, and just receiving it today, we have not had an opportunity to see what the zoning is or the uh, neighborhoods around these other two are. Um, I wonder if they're residential, similar to what the proposed location is, or surrounded by residential. I know it's an I-2. So we are, so our, our subject site is a spud with a base of I-2. That's what we're also seeking. Um, the other two, yeah, uh, admittedly, yeah, they're not residential. Um, but I would submit that this area is trending away from residential. Um, I mean, I, I know I, I wasn't here, but through planning commission, I saw the glamping, um, whatever that is, 
application that, that came through on the river. And so this area, I think, is trending away from residential as evidenced by the approval of this site for an industrial type of outdoor storage use. I would note that the approval of this site as an industrial outdoor storage was before the implication or the implementation of the scenic river overlay district, correct? 2015? Well, the 2015 was not, did not include this site. 2015 included the lot or two to the south right. that's in a separate spud. Okay. But it, it, it was after the inception of the, that the scenic was, river. Yes. But the, this current one was not, the, the current one was from 20 years ago. So this site is I-2 through a spud, south is I-2 through a spud. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm not sure I agree with the, the applicant's assertion that the neighborhood is trending away. I thought during the glamping planning commission hearing that it was it was clear that there there are many dedicated longtime residents there. Um, and then, t getting back to what you said about um, the other two lo locations, uh, the other billboards, they in looking at the aerial, they're obviously not next to residential. But I would say that the auto auction site, that which is what they're near, that is in a, a pud that predates Scenic River. So that is not, that area is, is, is not in Scenic River, that, that whole PUD there. And that's what, a little north and east, correct? Um, Block east and... Well, the, the... It's right there. Oh, and then you've got a wrecker yard. There's a wrecker yard right next to the, the glamping. Um, um, all along May, there's a lot of auto, auto salvage wrecking yards that all predate the establishment of Scenic River, but the majority of those are included in Scenic River, and we're only able to address the use when a property comes in. For example, you had one before you a few months ago that was down on Southwest 15th, you might recall. That came in as a result of a code enforcement case. Um, and it, the spud they got, you, you removed the auto salvage use, which is what they were really wanting to address their code enforcement case on that piece. But um, yes, there is a lot of auto-related, auto-savage wrecker all along May and 15th in this area. Uh, I'd just like to note for clarification that the intent of this board and this overlay district is to enforce conformance with the uh, vision of what this area should become and not necessarily what it is today or what it's trending towards. The city has established this overlay district to try to achieve a certain design character. So that's what we're looking for conformance with. Uh, agreed. And I mean, I, what I think you get through this spud is that, because right now you have an industrial-based spud that doesn't have to conform to anything within the Scenic River overlay. Uh, we can continue to stack and store industrial materials 12 feet high. And so through the spud, you're going to get a development that conforms to all of the guidelines, setbacks, parking, buildings of your overlay. Um, we would like the ability to have a sign in exchange for that. So to me, again, it's easy on this side of the, the horseshoe to say that, but to me it, it, it is a win-win um, because it at least ensures that development here will conform to what the mission of this, this board is, which is now not the case. I have a question more to staff as far as looking at the bigger picture of where billboards are placed along certain corridors, um, you know, like Lake Heffern Parkway and all the way to the airport. Are, are there large billboards along I-44 from I-35 to uh, the uh, airport cutoff or? I what I could say is, thinking of driving in that area, yes, I've seen them. Do I know exactly where they're located? No. I know there is a distance separation requirement in the code already um, that would prohibit them. And I, I don't know what that distance is. The, Mr. Box might know. The code, state law is 1,000 feet. Oklahoma City years ago, um, through the sign industry getting together negotiated a greater distance. So the distance measured is 1,200 feet 
pursuant to Oklahoma City Code, which is greater than state law, the, the hope being that as old signs go out, you're going to decrease the overall number of signs. So to answer your specific question, yes, there are several as you go, I mean, just call it from Shields over to, to 44 on 40, um, there are several. And we do meet all state and local spacing requirements. But uh, new sign, new billboard signs are not allowed between Penn and 235. Correct. They, they, so further uh, east of here, there, there's a swath of I-40 up and down that they are not allowed. And but that, there has been. I mean, the Board of Adjustment granted a variance to allow. Well, well, let me, let me, in, in, in that, that specific one, that is the scenic highway. That's a separate regulation. Has, it's not specific to Scenic River. There was a billboard that needed to move um, uh, near Western or something, and so they actually went to the Board of Adjustment on appeal of an issue dealing with nonconformity, um, and so they were permitted and they moved it. Um, but, and then there has been one on 235 that came down but then went back up again and that dealt with the DOT and had nothing to do with the city. So um, there is an area, and that ordinance I believe was from 2004, that um, a corridor, a 235 and uh, I-40, where billboards are not allowed, but it does not go this far. Um, but Scenic River goes from east to west and doesn't allow them in any of it area at all. Yeah, but I, I believe the question for the committee is, is this billboard appropriate for this location given the regulations and guidelines of the Scenic River overlay? Thank you for the clarification. Perhaps it's a deeper question, though, right? Do we get all of the other things that the Scenic River gets that we don't have now? So you're saying you're willing to give up a four foot of stacking space for this sign? Is that what you were saying? And in addition, comply with all the other regulations that the Scenic River overlay has. Yeah, so and setbacks, parking, all of the other things that the Scenic River requires for development that aren't subject to the site, we're willing to adhere to and put into our SPUD. Right, there were, because, there were, because they could develop, under their current SPUD, they could develop this site in a variety, in a, several ways, and none of that would require design review approval. Correct. And, and all of which would be industrial. Yes. All of which would be industrial, and none of which would require design review approval. So some of the issues that they've agreed to is sidewalks on both street frontage, Scenic River requires that, Industrial does not. Street trees, which Scenic River requires. Although you're looking at this drawing, they have agreed to put the parking behind the building, which is something Scenic River wants, as well as um, other uh, guidelines and regulations the city has in other documents. Um, so they agreed to a lot of things that you're not necessarily seeing, because we've narrowed it down to just those issues that right now don't meet the guidelines and regulations. So yes, they did back off of some of the want list. And it's now a very small want list that we staff did not feel we could um, do anything other than to present it to you and recommend um, that that be removed. In fact, it's not even a list. Singular item. Singular item, yes. Yeah, but um, the, the things that the new but would contain in terms of the street trees, the parking, the building, the sidewalks, none of that would kick in until a new building. Full development. Correct. Correct. Come in. I think it's a little premature to make the assumption that this won't be um, um, redeveloped back as residential. Um, and uh, the other question I have for you is, if we don't agree to this signage, are you pulling back this um, request and staying with the spud that you have? Well, so what, what will happen today is a recommendation by this body, and the way that the spud is now is what we are going to seek. Um, again, we've negotiated against ourselves and, and got it to a point that complies with everything except for the one issue. And so, yes, we, we want the spud that we have presented. Um, if it doesn't get approved, then you know, it'll just it'll continue to be a, an outdoor industrial storage yard. But after the committee makes a recommendation to Planning Commission, it'll be heard at Planning Commission, and then Planning Commission will make 
recommendation to city council. So there are multiple other public hearings. This, this is the first stop of many. Laura, would you mind clarifying this site plan that's on the screen? That is not necessarily what is being proposed to be built. This, this is, is simply an example of what might occur under this FUD, correct? This, this is the, yes, this is the site plan they submitted with their original document prior to staff redlining it, getting them to agree to changes. The biggest one is that the parking would be behind the building, so obviously that's not what's showing up there. Um, however, the, uh, they would have to come with a CA application prior to any, for, for any changes to the site if a new SPUD was approved. Um, and this so. This SPUD was approved. Y yes, it, yeah, if a, if a new SPUD, you know, if, if the new SPUD does not get approved and it remains the old SPUD, they're still on their own and they don't come to me. But if, if a new SPUD gets approved, they would need a CA if it stays in Scenic River. Um, and at that time, we would make sure it complies with um, everything outlined in the, the SPUD. So to answer your specific question, yes, this is just conceptual. This was done before we met with staff. But now the language of the SPUD would explicitly prohibit what you see and would, in, would rather require to meet all the guidelines. And, and as she said, we'd have to come before uh, you guys again uh, and get a CA. Is there any other questions? Uh, chair would entertain a motion. Oh, would anybody else like to speak? I move that the SPUD be approved with the limitation outlined in the staff recommendation. Well, we don't agree, we don't agree to that. So, so are they entitled to like an up and down vote on their? Yes. Yes, uh, and then this will, this is just a recommendation to Planning Commission. It's not itself an, an approval or a denial. I move that we recommend denial of the petition. I second. Okay, the motion was made by Joyce and the second was by Larson. Any further discussion? The motion to deny. That is correct. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. None. Oh. Can I see a show of hands on that? Okay, oh. so can we start over again? So the motion to deny. Motion to deny. Deny. And so people voting in favor of that. Okay, so we have five, six. Okay, and then. Any of uh, uh, that object? Okay, so Ms. your vote. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. So that was a six to one with. Mike Voorhees. Okay. Thank you. Five to one, right? Okay. Item seven B, downtown development framework. Good morning. The last uh, year and a half, uh, sorry, yeah, Lisa Chronister, 420 West Main. Um, the uh, last 18 to 24 months, planning staff has been working on an update to the downtown development framework. You may remember it was um, it was adopted in 2015, and the intent was always that it be refreshed every few years. Um, so uh, here, uh, four years later, we are doing this. Uh, so what is it? Um, it's an adopted plan. It was adopted by City Council, Planning Commission. It was adopted as a supplemental guideline by all of the design review committees that it touches. Um, as a policy document, it has served as, as a uh, development guide uh, for the private sector. It has served as a guide for 
bond issue and sales tax projects. It has served as a guide for TIF policy. And where design committees mostly use it is as um, a resource guide with supplemental guidelines that are uh, a little more detailed and a little, and a little more finessed than what is in the code. So the, the first part, and it's, it's in everybody's um, uh, binders. This is my well-worn desk copy. So uh, there's two parts, a policy framework and a design framework. Uh, the policy framework uh, talks about uh, the street network, uh, parking, transit, and um, development typologies. I'll get into all of these in more detail here in a minute. And then the design framework um, detailed uh, much more about how the streetscape is supposed to interact with the building and about facade transparency and building massing and compatibility. So, um, so what did we do in this update? Uh, we did a, a little, a lot of little things and a few big things. The little things were uh, things like on all the maps, it was hard to read the street names. Uh, some street names weren't listed, some were incorrect. It made it really difficult to read. Um, we added uh, some thumbnail maps. We spell checked, uh, all that kind of cleanup stuff. We updated some of the maps to reflect current conditions. The biggest changes uh, we did uh, that I'll go through again in more detail here in a minute is uh, we deleted the building typology compatibi compatibility matrix. We deleted the future development planning guide and I'll describe uh, why that was important. Uh, we inserted a new page that described what uh, building frontages and street design along streetcar and park frontage routes needed to look like. Um, we updated a few of the street typologies on the map, and we updated a few of the de development typologies. So, whoa, there we go. Um, so I've highlighted uh, in the, the, the black dashed line are the areas of the DDF that are within the SRODD, and my comments are going, that when I describe what has changed, I'm going to focus on on this, on this area, but if you have questions about other parts of the map, I'm happy to answer them. So updated certain development typologies, and we updated just everything about showing where the final park locations were. I mean, 2015 doesn't sound like too long ago, but the convention center site was not a, a certainty at that point. So, you know, we've, uh, you know, indicated that, how we know now it is developing. Uh, we cleaned up things to make it clear uh, what is right of way, what is actually developable land and what is not. Uh, so from a, in the scenic river area, there are actually very few changes. Uh, this is the producer's co-op site. You know, we had, we had shown some sort of grid street layout, but, but you know, we have no idea how, how that will develop. So we just wanted to indicate a broad stroke that it's a, you know, a, a high density area and the new developers will figure out what the street arrangement is because it, um, there's only one or two existing streets right now. So that's a development typology map. On other areas of downtown, we made sure all the parks were shown and labeled. Um, and uh, we changed uh, um, Bricktown and Automobile Alley are designated as the same development typology type, and we gave them a distinctive color. And that's to recognize that they're both you know, uh, mixed use, high intensity, pedestrian areas with, with a mix of uses that derives its character from the historic buildings on those, in those areas. So we deleted the building typology compatibi compatibility matrix. I don't remember that we've struggled with this in Riverfront. In downtown, we struggle with it all the time. In this matrix, uh, the intent was to um, indicate uh, what types of uses and massings were compatible with other types of uses and 
other types of uses in massings. And some things were identified as fully compatible, some things were identified as partially compatible, but it was hard to consistently interpret, you know, what's the difference between partially and fully? What makes it compatible? And the whole premise of the design district ordinance in the first place was to achieve that compatibility through the existing guidelines. So we um, want to just take that out and again let all the design review district guidelines ensure that compatibility. The future development guide um, also we're voting to take, <laughs> we're uh, proposing to take it out. As time went on from 2015 it got uh, harder and harder to determine if this was aspirational, if this map was showing what we wanted things to be, if it was showing where the market was leading us, if it was showing, uh, to what extent it was showing conformities and nonconformities. And uh, every time we went to update any portion of it, we struggled with these questions. And the, the big original intent was to show broad strokes of development as a guide, you know, a, a very intense core here in the Central Business District. Um, outside of that, a still very intense but not as intense ring as the Central Business District, and then a feathering out into the neighborhoods. So, um, so uh, we were proposing to just scrap both of these pages, if there was critical information about the development in terms of density in this table, we've incorporated it into the preface of each of the development typologies, like uh, right here. So that would be gone. Um, a new page for streetcar and park frontage priority areas. The um, the downtown park, the up, both the upper park and the lower park, the streetcar are significant public investments. Development on there, on those routes needs to be very dense, very transparent, very mixed use. It needs to have active ground floor uh, uses uh, to maximize the public investment. Um, so we've diagrammed all that out, um, and we're saying, you know, Frontage along the streetcar and frontage along parks is, is equally valuable and should be developed in much of the same way. So uh, this is a new map um, and basically it shows if you're on park frontage, uh, you need to be, you know, we need to limit curb cuts. We don't want parking, front, parking garages fronting these routes. I mean, that's uh, too valuable of real estate to put parking garage, but parking garages could be ringed with active use. Then updated certain street typologies. I don't believe uh, anything in the river area changed. Um, we, um, uh, again, uh, it's a little, the new map is easier to read because we've located all the parks, but none, none of the street typologies in the lower park area actually changed. So this is the first uh, design review committee I'm presenting to, and it'll go to the three other ones that are affected by the, that use the DDF. And then it'll go to planning commission and be um, the amendments, amended changes uh, we're asking city council to receive or adopt. With that, I'll open it up for questions. So we're asking the committee today to make a recommendation to planning commission. And I can I can return to any any slides. I'd like to start just by commending you and staff for this document and the um, constant updates as as the city grows and evolves. It's it's really a fantastic document that I think not a lot of cities have something to this extent. Um, I, I had just a couple um, comments just out of my own curiosity. Um, in the major land use themes at the beginning, um, I noticed. Um, uh, an indication to re redevelop the Cox Convention Center site as high-density mixed-use development, and that's the first I'd heard about that. Do, but I know that's not within the purview of this committee. But could you just update us on um, what the? Yeah, I is believe there? I'll try to find it quickly. I believe it was always does 
it was, it was always assumed it would redevelop and be redeveloped in a very high dense, you know, a very dense, tall uh, development. Um, does that answer your, uh, but, but that's it, but this, this document is broad strokes. It's not saying what needs to go there, it's just saying, hey, the, um, uh, the traditional grid pattern should be reestablished and whatever goes there needs to be dense, transparent, active use, all those things. Oh, I love it. I was just curious about the, yeah. the vision for that. Um, and the second question I had is actually under the special designation typology referring to lower brick down. Um, there's a note describing lower brick down as a primarily automobile oriented uh, dining, entertainment, and shopping area centered around the Bricktown Canal. I wondered if it was necessary to include the note that it's primarily auto oriented since much of it is, is actually quite walkable and if this is to be a framework of what we hope to see development becoming, then is that? Yeah, um, that's, a good, that's a good question. Lower Bricktown is a PUD, so it's not in design review. What is captured in the DDF um, tries to uh, more recognize what it is and what it provides for. Like to me, it, I, I believe it's fairly walkable. To me, one of the defining characteristics are the large expanses of parking lot, surface parking, and, and I think when it says automobile oriented, uh, that's what it's recognizing. But um, if so, no, because it's an existing PUD, no additional vision or guidelines or requirements are being suggested on top of it in this document. Okay, thank you. Well, I'll just add to John's comments again. Thank you for the effort you put into this, and it's, I think it'll be a great tool for the development of downtown Oklahoma City. So, uh, with that, uh, Chair would entertain them. I, ha I just have a few comments. Um, I think the content is great, um, and I realize that this is a uh, preliminary. There's a number of graphic things that I've noted, and I don't know if you want me to call that to your attention off. Uh, yes, if you can give me a markup, I'd be happy to look at integrating them. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Chair would entertain a motion. I move to approve this. Okay. To Second. recommend approval. I recommend <laughs> approval. I move to recommend approval of this document. Thank you. I'll second. Okay. Committee member Postick made the motion to approve and Heisel made the second. Okay. All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Item 7C, uh, 2020 meeting schedule. Has everybody had a chance to look at that? On the I will note that unlike this year, we didn't have to change any meeting dates, no holiday impacted. So it'll be probably two or three years and then we'll run into 4th of July again. So. Move approval. We have second. Okay. Committee member Okay, Voorhees. so that was Voorhees, Dana. Okay. And Thank you. Templeton made this second. Any further discussion? All in favor of approving the schedule? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The schedule's approved. <laughs> Item 8A, communications. It was a little quiet this past month, but. Okay. 8B, com comments from planning department staff. We are currently working on a couple of SPUDs that we're anticipating, we'll, we'll know within the next week, week and a half, but we're anticipating that we'll have a, a meeting in October. So please check your schedules and we will update you, as I said, within the next week, week and a half, as soon as we're con we confirm um, that they're on. So. Things apparently have started um, hopping in Scenic River here with all these spuds that are coming up. Thank you, Laura. Um, item 8C, comments from committee members? 
Item D, next meeting date is October 3rd. And uh, with that, uh, we'll adjourn. Thank you.